Sunday, 27th of February. It's about time I was back in the garden. Now, because I've got no heat in here as such, most of these seeds have been shifted indoors. Now, I had a good run, brought the first lot out, put them on a rack I bought. Buy these racks in pairs. Put one up, got the first lot out of the house. As soon as I saw sure signs of chitting, they're out. I made a mistake. Oh, yeah, a whopper. I forgot the handles on this electric chair, wheelchair, stick out further than the last wheelchair I had. I caught the framework. The whole bloody lot went over. <laughs> not a worry. It's not the end of the world. We're still early in the season yet. So I put more seeds into chit. They're through. And where, where I could, I put them in the uh, cellular trays. I suppose they come to prick it out. Only the, the now I know what comes up in the trays or what's put in the trays will come up. Uh, amongst me, well, amongst the dilemma was some uh, sweet pea seeds I put in. I don't know where they're at now, they could be anywhere on the floor. But when I was in hospital, just before Christmas, I had a, a mail call. Uh, a good friend of mine, Ronald Shaw, sent me some seeds. I believe these are part of Hilda's mix, which is now finding its way around the country. With a pack of pongo beans but they'll come out a later date I will put I will put Ron's uh, program title in the box below but uh, oh, we've been friends for a long time me and Ron and ever since I first started going to hospital phone calls great bloke Thank you very much, Ron. So, I'm going to sow some sweet pea seeds today. I don't know how much of this you can see. No, never mind. But I'm not going to preach it, these. Three peas can be very hardy. Oh, some stock here. Eh? I think I'll keep some of these for next year. So basically, it's Just make sure you don't drop it on the deck. Press them in. Good contact with the compost. This, by the way, is just repurposed compost from last year. But with no feeding, you don't need it. I've said it before, the seed is a little powerhouse of its own. It's got its own feed till it starts up. Then when you repot them, there's generally, unless it's repurposed compost, you've got feed in the compost for a while. If you repurpose them for, for pricking out, then by all means, add a bit of feed. But, Just 
to be the compost on the top. I have added a bit of vermiculitum with this. Just keep it nice and open. All I need now is a label. Yes, I received these the other day. From Terry King. You know Terry, a lot of garden on a budget. There's so many things. Make your own fertilizers. Brilliant. Just like Ronald Shaw, well worth a watch. Yes. Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem artichokes, not globe artichokes. The difference is globe artichoke has the big flower, the bulb, the bulbous flower, where the below the petals. This one produces the, the tubers. And yeah. I've already invested in a face mask because the wife eats them. I don't. I might try some when they're ready. Be a first. Which means the wife and daughter's gonna to have to invest in a face mask as well. <laughs> <laughs> now this has already started throwing shoots and roots. So I'm gonna to have to get them planted out. Brilliant. Uh, Terry advises a 35 litre pot. Yeah, I think I've got a 35 or 40 litre there, I could do. So they can, they can get planted. I'll tell you what, they're quick at throwing the roots out. I only got them the other day. <laughs> Another one, shoots and roots. Oh. Definitely ready for planting. Thank you very much, Terry. Much appreciated, mate. Oh, they're getting planted today. Right, a 35 litre pot, repurposed compost, I have put blood fish and bone in. Now, Terry said one tuber. In a ghost? Compost level will sink as it dries out and I will top it up more. But decent sized pot shouldn't blow very easy because artichokes can grow to a fair size. If need be I'll half bury the pot. <laughs> well that's that one done. If things get as bad as I expect, I'll be calling this place Chicago, Windy City. <laughs> right, another job I want to get done today. Croissants. This is not one of me name varieties I bought last year. It's an old variety I had with white flowers, nice flowers. I do for the vibe. That's what my daughter never been. <laughs> so I should get up. 
five or six plants of this. There's more flowers from the end of the year, November onwards. Hey, I've got roots on, so I'll just tidy it up. Yeah, I'll keep with the roots on. Once again, repurposed compost. I didn't put any fertilizer in it because I thought I was going to be taking cuttings, not something with a root on. But feeding is not a problem. If you can't put it in the start, you can feed them later on. Just give them a week or two to get a hold. Um, I like, I like my seaweed extract. Feed them with that. Especially this time of year. But not too much, it's still cold. You don't want too much growth for the cold to get a hold of. Okay, right, croissants done. I have four of them had roots on. So, like I said, just potted up as normal. And the last four, no roots, just took them as cuttings, dipped them in uh, root and compound, helped to dry the wound up a bit quicker as well. And I should have. Eight good plants, approximately six or seven blooms in each, with the vase in the house there on the air. Thank God the daughter missed that route. In the back, the potatoes are chitting well. These ones, Cara. No, they're, no, they're not. I've had to plant carter because the uh, chits went berserk. These ones are condor. And they just started to throw chits out, as you can see. I'm willing to get a good half inch plus. And like I say, I'm going to try and do what Tony O'Neill did. Obviously he's trying for the world record. I'm not looking for a record. I'm not even looking for a winner in a show, I don't, I don't want to show my veg. But if I can get some decent sized potatoes, I'll be a happy chappy. Like I say, there's no heating in as such. I do have a heater in, but I've got on one bar, paraffin heater, and the lowest it's been in here is 36 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not reached freezing yet, and we have had some freezing temperatures. And considering when I had the allotment, I used to grow in a greenhouse with no heating whatsoever. The compost used to freeze solid, but the seed still germinated. The only thing I failed on, actually failed on this year, is I thought, well, because I'm not going below freezing, I'll put a couple of cucumber seeds and see what happened. And, of course, they didn't make it. It's still too cold. I'll give another few weeks, then I'll start them off in earnest. I think maybe it's next week, tomatoes, I'll start them off next week. But, like I said, the majority of stuff in here, because I spent seven weeks in hospital and seven weeks in bed, unable to, to get out, I eventually, when I did get in the wheelchair, I thought, well, I'm going to chit in indoors. And it's worked very well. And I'm seeing the the fruits of me, me attempts. You might think I'm mad, but 
I've only got a garden now, it's not an allotment where I need a lot of seedlings and quite often one cell in a 12, 12 cell tray will give me all I need. Right, the beetroot at the back and the turnips. I could probably put them in the tubs, but I don't think there's enough root to hold the soil together yet. I'll probably give them another week or so. And then we'll get the big, big pots potted up. But at the moment, I'm thinking about the peas, putting them in. They're taller than you think. I should have had the legs on the tripod fully extended, but they are longer than you think. Like I said, I've got seeds pre chitting indoors, and there's a variety of rhubarb called Champier and I believe you can see I've just shown the radical the shoot thrown through now well as far as I'm concerned I don't want the shoot to get any longer I'll get them put into modules right rhubarb champion six cells I put six in but I only want two plants I've already got two giant rhubarb coloss colossal, uh, two Graskins perpetual, uh, two of the champagne. I'll put all six in, I'll keep the biggest two, the rest I'll give away if anybody wants them. But, like I've shown you, that's about as much root as I want to see come out of the seed. I don't want it to stand too long and they're a nice big seed so I can manage them with my hand if you can get them root down, get them root down but it doesn't matter the root's going to go down anyway and the shoot will always come to the surface Well, five of them shown the shoot. Oh, sorry, all six have. The last one I thought. I thought it was just a great seed. It's got a shoot to it. Right, level. Now they were only put in four days ago to chit. A couple of days, should, should be through. But they're really easy to grow rhubarb from seed. And this soil's quite damp, so I'll let it go a bit before I water it. And that can be used to chip more seed. It's like a conveyor belt, as soon as you chit some seeds, you bring them out, pot them up, there's room to put a few more seeds in the indoors. That's my rhubarb champagne and I've also done sweet pepper thaw. This was one that I originally lost in the calamity. Uh, Put in the 24th of February for chitting. 28th shoots shown in the pot. And I'm able to maintain 55 degrees in here, funny enough, which is surprising for the size of it. But I'm still giving them a little bit more protection. 
and that should give me a couple of degrees extra protection. Good God, it needs a clean. I'll do that off camera. <laughs> okay, guys.